please. This is gonna be fun. All the way around my eyes, make sure that no light gets through that thing. Great. This is a great way to lose an eyebrow. The next piece we're going to take, and it's going to go the same way as we did before. Open my eye, push it down, push it down, push it down. Yeah, I lose an eyebrow each time I do this. This next piece, I want you to stick over the, uh, the uh, forehead part. Uh, All right. okay. I'm going to take this black bag. You. So you'd say I am securely blindfolded now, right? Oh, most definitely. All right, good. Officers, are you ready? Cars in drive? Yep. First row, you check your mirrors. That's the mirror? Yeah. Okay, it's there, good. Cars in drive, e-brakes off, seat belts? Mm-hmm. Trusting you. Yep. Pull this down nice and tight. Ready, here we go. So do I. Yep. All right, you gotta tell me what you see right now. <laughs> tell me what you see. Just take a look ahead of me. Keep looking straight ahead. I see a couple of police cars. A oh, nice leisurely left hand turn. Right, you gotta let me know if anything's going on, please. I sure cannot see. Five different methods for going blind. Any one of them alone is almost a perfect blindfold. Okay. All five of these make it very hard. How are we doing so far? We're doing really great. Truth be told, I'm a very inquisitive individual and uh, I'm a full-time student out at Sheridan College and that keeps me pretty wrapped up when I'm not working. But I do magic as a, as a, a career now. It's my career choice, um, which is a blast. And I got a little bored. Um, Myself, much as everyone else, tends to wonder sometimes about weird things. And I wondered what it'd be like to spend a day blind. And I figure people take senses for granted. And I've had some friends uh, that I've worked with at different hospitals who have been deaf, mute, and uh, some of them blind as well. And I kind of wondered what it'd be like to be in their shoes. Now, that's a plateful enough spending a day blind. Going up and down stairs is a lot harder than you'd imagine. And I thought, well... I've got a, a theater show coming up at the Wild, and I thought if I'm going to do a show at the Wild, the material I present there has to be bigger than anything I've ever done. It's a big theater. It's got to be good. Uh, better, I should say, than, than most of my shows. It should be something that you'd see David Copperfield do, because he's the, the gold standard for, for stage magic. And I thought, why don't we do something that's going to get everyone's head and shared and turned and go, what's going on? And actually kind of shake things up a bit. And I thought, why not drive blind? Well, then it became, why not drive a sports car blind? 
Um, and I decided if I was going to do this that I needed to help a worthy cause, and that's where Kids Kids came in. I listen to Sheridan Media constantly. They've got the best radio stations around, and I, I, I listen to Q104.9 every morning on the way to school um, and every night on the way home. Uh, so I hear Kid Craddock in the mornings, and he does Kids Kids, which uh, every year he fills a Boeing 737 jetliner, one of those big jumbo jets, up with terminally ill kids and sends them and their families all expenses paid to Disney World. And some of the kids I've worked with through David Copperfield's Project Magic at different children's hospitals and after school programs um, have, have really benefited from some of the therapy that can be found in magic. And I thought, well, this seems like the perfect way to bring some real magic to some people who could really use it. Left turn, tell me what? Should be closed now. Here we go. So Grinnell, that means we're at the bell. You are. See, there it is. Some of the best friends in the magic business who have given me their wisdom and taken some time to help me out. But I thought I had always dreamed about what it'd be like to do a, a big show, like a a big stage show like you always see magicians do. Well, as a college kid, we don't have a lot of money and stage magic props to buy are incredibly expensive. Um, we also don't have a place to store big props, so I decided to try and design some of my own illusions, and I purchased a few um, that I could use in smaller shows, and then a couple were designed specifically for the Wild. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do the Wild Theater, if I'm going to do a show there, it needs to fit in the Wild Theater. I could have done a, a very, very uh, fun, enjoyable uh, close-up show, or even a, a parlor show there for an audience of 500 but it really wouldn't mean as much to you you wouldn't be as entertained as I as you would be with some of these larger illusions I get a lot of audience interaction but these big illusions in this theater seem to really kind of bring a lot of wonder to just put the, the icing on the cake good good turn, turn left to match the curve left and you're in all right Woo! Next part would be our face mask. Make sure that those spoon bowls are still embedded into my eye sockets, please. Ah, thank yep. you. That's my eye socket. Thanks. Thank you so much. And here comes the most fun I'll ever have. <laughs> embedded into my eye socket is a spoon bowl. Ah, and there goes an eyebrow. Met into the other eye socket is a spoon bowl. And one hard pull like a band-aid. You want to help me out, Kurt? Not particularly. I do. <laughs> oh. ah! That is a stunningly close shape. Thanks, Grandma. Love ya. <laughs> so uh, that's my blind drive. Thank you to the Sheridan Media, Sheridan Motor, the slew of sponsors we've had, uh, Quiznos, Babes Flowers, um, Office Coffee Shop, Special Occasions, uh, Buggy Bath Car Wash, uh, there's, there's a, 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 the trophy case, there's 40 or 50 more, uh, Home Depot, so thank you to everybody. Come see the show at the Wild, you won't want to forget it, so uh, cool.